How many patients do we see with myelodysplastic syndrome, otherwise known as MDS? Probably not many on a daily basis, but we need to be familiar with the proper protocol for conducting a thorough workup when we suspect MDS. Understanding the intricacies of this diagnostic process is crucial, so let's delve into the essential components. I'm Dr. Sanjay Juneja, and this is the first of a five-part CE-certified TikTok activity on MDS and anemia from the Medical Learning Institute. Yes, you heard that right. CE certified, folks. That means peer-reviewed, evidence-based educational material to help guide treatment for your patients. First, start by taking a good history and physical exam. You want to know about smoking, occupational, chemical exposures, prior chemotherapy and radiation, all of which are risk factors for MDS. Next, you want to accurately assess the patient by evaluating for alternative causes for cytopenia, such as nutritional deficiencies, hypothyroidism, and of course, autoimmune disease. If this workup is non-revealing, you then proceed with a bone marrow biopsy, which is the gold standard for diagnosing MDS. Patients must have dysplasia in at least 10% cells in a given lineage, blast cell count less than 20%, and plus minus certain cytogenetic abnormalities to meet MDS diagnostic criteria. In the past, the only treatment options available for patients diagnosed with low-risk disease and anemia were blood transfusions, lenalidomide for isolated DEL5Q, and ESAs. We now have Lucepatercept. We'll get into ESAs and other therapeutic options, such as Lucepatercept in video four, but I did want to mention that while ESAs have been the gold standard of treatment for patients with anemia in low-risk MDS, and while they're typically well-tolerated with patients responding to them early, there are those who eventually become refractory, and then we need something else. ESAs can also be a burden as patients have to come into clinic at least once a week versus every three weeks with Lucepatercept. Again, more on this in a later video. Lispatercept is an erythroid maturation agent that works by binding to select TGF beta superfamily ligands, thereby modulating and transforming growth factor beta signaling pathways by enhancing late stage erythropoiesis. I wanted to set you up with the knowledge about clinical trials like the Medalist and PACE trial that led to the FDA approval of an alternative to ESAs with Lispatercept for patients with anemia in low risk MDS, as well as a more recent trial, COMMANDS, which showed similar findings red blood cell transfusion independence, and increased hemoglobin levels, which is game-changing, yeah! On top of that, Lispatercept is generally well-tolerated with manageable side effects and a generally consistent safety profile across studies of Lispatercept. But check them out in the link below. Remember, this is all evidence-based. This is a huge advancement in our treatment armamentarium for anemia in low-risk MDS, so make sure you know about it for your patients. To get credit for this activity, don't forget to answer the questions on the link below.